How to be an awesome distance learner. <clears throat> distance learning is definitely a lot different than our regular learning in a school, right? It's home, it's school, it's some sort of combination of both, and that can be confusing for your brain. Your mission is to figure out how to be an awesome distance learner. You can do it. There's some things that might be tricky or that are already tricky about distance learning. That's okay. I'll help you through them. Here's what you'll be doing on Seesaw. What do you think might make distance learning hard for you? You'll type it on this page. Here's how to be an awesome distance learner. Find your learning spaces. Be respectful. Try your best. Have fun during the day, not on a screen. Ask for help. Find your learning space or spaces. Where can you do your distance learning? A desk at home would be great, but not everyone has that. If you don't have a desk, that's okay. You just need to find a, a place that's quiet and with room for you to work, and with the supplies you need. You also do this on Seesaw. Move the check mark to show your home learning space. Will it be the desk, the kitchen table, the coffee table, or on the floor? The distance learning for our school will sometimes be live. That means your classmates and teacher will all be on devices at the same time, listening and watching together. Your computer or tablet screen is another learning space. Just like there are, there are expectations for students in class at school, there are expectations for distance learning too. They help everyone to get their brain in learning mode. Class rules. Be respectful. Be responsible. Be safe. You get dressed for school in our building and you should get dressed for school online. It's okay to still be comfy, but no pajamas or costumes. If we're using video, that means I want to see your face. Check to make sure your whole face is in the middle of the screen. Backgrounds are cool. It's okay to use a background. Just make sure the one you pick isn't distracting and that you stick with the one you pick. You are what we want to see. And last but not least, please don't eat when you're on video. I want you to be healthy and full so your brain can learn, but it's really distracting if someone is eating food in a video. Here are some more expectations that are specific to our class. Come to class prepared. Be respectful. Mute your microphone when it's not your turn to speak. Participate by raising your hand or your digital emoji hand. Use your real first and last name when logging into Zoom. Focus on your learning with your eyes on the screen and your ears listening. Ask for help if you have any questions. Drag the checks onto the students that look like an awesome distance learners and drag the X's onto the students that don't. You will also do this in Zoom. I'm sorry, Seesaw. Be respectful. Communicating online is different than talking to someone in person, but it's still super important to show respect. If it would be, hurt, if it would be hurtful to say in person, it's hurtful and not okay to say online. Chats and messages are for asking and answering questions to make sure you understand what is going on, not for chatting with your friends. Just like in school, only one person should be speaking at a time. This way, we can all hear what someone is saying. One way to make sure this happens is for students to be muted when it's not their turn to speak. This also helps make sure noises in your home don't accidentally become part of our video lessons. Sometimes we might have a chance to all talk together as a class about things that aren't related to what we're learning, just to enjoy our time together. There are some things you still shouldn't talk about or share with the class, things that should be kept personal or private. Try your best. There are so many things at home that can be distracting when you're trying to focus on doing schoolwork. Lots of things. So baby sister, video games, TV, 
music, loud noises like your dog or the trash. Also, our brains are used to used to home time being about family, chores, relaxing, and playing. That can make it a little trickier to turn our brains to learning time. And you are probably adjusting to the fact that your parent or your parent or parents are now also your teachers. Teacher, parent, both. It can be helpful to set a specific time each day that you will sit in your learning space and do work. If you don't already use a planner or a calendar, that can be a huge help. Write down class meetings, when assignments are due, and work time to do the assignments. Just like we have a schedule at school, making a schedule for yourself at home is a good idea. You might also try using encouraging talk to help yourself get to work. So she's thinking, time to turn the TV off and start writing. You're going to sort the thoughts below to show which would help you be an awesome distance learner and which would hurt your learning. So what's helpful and what's hurtful? You're also going to make yourself a schedule for 8 to... This is actually 8.55 to 4 p.m. Type the different things you will do each day in order. Remember to add meals, doing your schoolwork, having fun, and more. Having fun, <clears throat> have fun during the day, not on a screen. With distance learning, you're probably spending a lot of time during the day on a screen. The problem with this is that too much screen time isn't great for your brain. When you're having fun time, try to do things that don't involve a computer, tablet, TV, or phone. There are lots of different things you can do. Put a check mark next to the things that would be fun for you. Ask for help. There are some parts of your home that you don't have control over. I understand that. If I talk about an expectation today that you're not sure if you're able to meet, please let me know and we'll work it out together. So you could say, I'm feeling worried that and I will say, let me help you figure it out. Here are some examples of what that might look like. I'm having trouble getting the video to play. Can you help me figure it out? I feel nervous being on video. Can you help me feel more comfortable? My mom doesn't know how to help me with this math, but I'm super confused. Who can I ask to help? Which of these challenges do you think you might experience during distance learning? Put a check mark on the ones you think you might have challenges with. What are some of your first thoughts about distance learning? You'll type these in in Seesaw. You're also going to write what you are worried about with distance learning, because sometimes we have those thoughts. You're also going to write about what might be something good or exciting about distance learning. We are in this together. I know you will be an awesome distance learner.